The story of the blue fugates is a story of inbreeding in America, the most unique story of inbreeding in America, and others say that this is the most inbred family ever in America. It's a story about a man named Martin Fugate who had been a French orphan and came over to America just to seek a better life for himself in 1820. I'm Deanna from Hot for History and thank you for watching my channel where you will learn history that I'm positive your history teacher would never dare to teach you. Today we're going to talk about the Blue Fugates from Troublesome Creek, Kentucky. They were a real family who had blue skin, which came from a recessive genetic condition. The Blue Fugates of Kentucky, otherwise known as the Blue People of Kentucky from Troublesome Creek. I love the name of that town. They're an amazing case study of inbreeding in America and specifically the way that their genetics unraveled. When it comes to skin tone, we often think of blue skin as being like, let's say, Avatar and the beautiful alien Natiri of the Nari aliens. At least that's what I think of. Or we think of the Smurfs, the little fairy or troll people cartoons that were so odd and so strange for so many years. Do you remember the Smurf cereal? Well, Smurfberry Crunch had this blue dye in it actually that made people poop blue that's why it was discontinued and the blue dye within the cereal actually was the same blue dye that they used to make blue jeans it was making people get so sick now there seems to be a connection because the blue fugates actually had something flowing through them or something not flowing through them because of the inbreeding that caused the blue skin we'll get to that in a second so in a nutshell think of the blue fugates as being sort of across from the very gorgeous Natiri, Nari people, only shorter and not as good looking, and the Smurfs that had a mysterious element within their blood. Let's go back to Martin Fugates. He came to America from France in 1820, and then he went to Troublesome Creek in Kentucky because the US government was offering free land to anybody who would settle there. And he's like, heck yeah, I'll go there and I'll get free land. His skin was blue. He didn't like being in France. He didn't get like getting all those looks and he liked the idea of being in a remote part of the world. So there was this mystery because the only way for people's skin to get blue is something genetic or when people's skin is blue, you often think of, okay, there's not enough oxygen or there's something chemically wrong with them or toxic. And if you go onto Google and you see this guy, Paul Carrison, well, that is because his skin's blue and Paul Carrison was on Oprah talking about turning blue with Dr. Oz, but on Oprah, he used too much colloidal silver. Ironically, he kept taking that his entire life and he thought it was gonna make him healthier, but he died at the age of 62 in the year 2013 and he was still taking the colloidal silver. I'm not dissing the colloidal silver. I'm just saying that there is a possibility that some kind of external thing like bad water or toxicity could make your skin blue, but that is not the case for the blue fugates because the blue fugates consistently had this problem and this is why. So Martin came to America and he married this beautiful woman named Elizabeth Smith. Now Elizabeth was in Troublesome Creek. She had pink skin and she just loved Martin. She could care less that his skin was blue. But what they didn't know is that she also had the recessive gene for this thing called methemoglobinemia. Um, this blood condition occurs when your cells don't get enough oxygen because we know hemoglobin is a very important protein that's inside your blood and it connects to the red blood cells and it carries the oxygen into your bloodstream. There's a type of hemoglobin called methemoglobin. Methemoglobin, say that three times, that carries the oxygen, but that does not release the oxygen. If you carry too much of this methemoglobin, it can actually replace your body's normal supply of oxygen. Back in the day, in the mountains of Troublesome Creek, people tended to marry close relatives. There just weren't that many people there. There were like four families. That reduced the variety of people that they could marry, which is not uncommon in remote places, not uncommon to marry relatives. It reduces the gene pool. Because they were in such a remote area, they just had to keep marrying each other. And they didn't want to go anywhere because their skin was blue and they were afraid that people would see them. They didn't want to leave, so they just kept marrying and marrying and marrying people for 150 years. They didn't want to see doctors because they didn't want to be used for like scientific projects. Family members that had the pink complexions tended to leave like during the 1900s. And Martin Fugate and his wife had seven kids. Four of them had blue skin, three of them had whiter, pinker skin. 
but they all carried the recessive gene. And then Martin Fugate's son, Zechariah, married his mother's sister, his aunt. And then all these people were marrying their first cousins and then that kept happening. So even though for you to get meth hemoglobinemia, you would need both parents to have the gene, one in a billion chance that people would get this methemoglobinemia because both parents would need to have it. But in this case, everybody ended up having it. The doctors that heard about it, they're like, well, maybe it's a heart condition, maybe it's a lung condition. And when we think of blue people, we think of babies that maybe come out of the womb and they're blue and we have to resuscitate them. When somebody's dying, we have to give them CPR because they're blue. There was a young hematologist named Madison Cowan. This was like Madison Cowan the third, And he was fascinated with blood and he heard about these people. He's said blood cells always look beautiful to me. He was kind of a blood nerd like that. And he helped to isolate an antidote for cholera during World War II and Parkinson's disease. So he was a solutions guy, but he wanted to meet one of these people, but he never saw them. There was this nurse named Ruth Pendergrass. She had had one woman come into the clinic and she's like, oh my gosh, you're blue, are you dying? And the woman was like, uh, no, I'm one of the blue people of Kentucky, don't worry about it. And then there was another person who came in and they all thought that they were dying, but it was rare. It was sort of like seeing a unicorn. When they would come in, it would be like, whoa, what are you? And then they would sort of disappear and nobody would know where to find them. Years later, this couple, Patrick and Rachel Ritchie, they came to the doctor and they're like, look, we're tired of having our blue skin. This is ridiculous. So they asked Dr. Madison Howen, to research this. Dr. Cowan was positive this was methemoglobinemia, but they didn't know, so he needed to take blood tests. He started to research. He found a doctor in Alaska who studied indigenous people who also had this problem because of the same reason, because of the double recessive gene. They figured out the antidote and the treatment for this. And by the way, this went on all the way to 1972. People had an absence of an enzyme called diaphorase. I'm sounding so intelligent. That enzyme converts the meth hemoglobin into regular hemoglobin. So these people that have this recessive gene do not have the diaphorase. Dr. Madison went with Rachel and Patrick into Troublesome Creek, met all of these people, and Dr. Madison figured it out. The way for him to get the diaphorase into people and convert thing was to actually and ironically inject a blue dye called methylene blue dye and if you inject people with this it actually turns their skin pink he injected this into patrick and rachel and watched as their skin turned pink for the first time in all of their lives and then he started distributing these tablets i guess they were like methylene blue tablets that they had to take consistently for this to happen eventually people weren't marrying relatives anymore the gene pool kind of grew there weren't as many double recessive gene issues and you don't see that many people with blue skin anymore. But that is the story of the blue fugates. Easy to think that this is a myth because it sounds so outrageous, but it's not a myth. There actually were people due to inbreeding that had this issue. Thank you for watching my channel where you will learn history that I'm positive your history teacher would never dare to teach.